All right, so this time on Weekend Rental, we are on the Super Famicom land, and we are checking out Hebereke games. I think that's how you say that, but I don't know. These are all made by Sunsoft, and sometime between 1993 and like 1996. There's three of them. They all star a toboggan, I guess you'd call it, that kind of hat, uh, wearing white bird with white sh uh, yellow shoes. Um, I think it's the star of Euphoria, but it, I actually don't think it is now that I'm looking at him again. But a uh, very similar art style. Um, yeah, so the first one we played was uh, Sugoi Hebereke. Amazing uh, Hebereke, I guess that's his, that's his name. Uh, it's a competitive four player, up to four player uh, arena fighter, maybe you would call it. Uh, you beat each other up, you can do special moves. It's not uh, 3D, it's on Super Nintendo, of course, so it's kind of an overhead perspective. Eight-way directions, jump button, punch kick, that's it. Pretty simple. Uh, there's some items, a little bit of chaos thrown in there. Um, yeah, so I'll start us off with reviews. We'll go through each game. and then. Uh, but for me, this one's a 3.5. I did like it a lot. Uh, it does have some problems, mostly due to Super Nintendo limitations and what it's trying to do. Um, so it took away from the experience for me. I would really like a, a ROM hacker to play it on an emulator that can turbo mode it, uh, just to make it a little more responsive. But I think the mechanics were, were what you'd want for a four player fighting game primarily. And I, I do really like the character designs. Shake, if it, how it shakes out though, it might be kind of unbalanced, whatever, um, doesn't bother me. So yeah, I'd play it again. Um, I'll definitely play it on something that can do turbo and see if it runs any better. Uh, pants problems. What about you? What do you think of Sugoi Hebereke? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's an arena fighter, kind of unique to see on the Super Nintendo from like roughly around the time. Like it, it's definitely it's unique and it it's fun, um, but the technical problems really kind of make it difficult to enjoy at the same time um it's it's cool and i mean it's kind of frenetic and kind of a mess but it's it's neat is is it one of those ones like in 2022 that i go back and probably check out all the time probably not but it's 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 pretty it's okay you know end of the day like if i were to put a number on it, it'd be like a three out of five it's just one of those so you know curious curious what you think will uh I liked it. it. Had a lot of personality. The uh, slowdown was atrocious, though. That is the only thing I couldn't get over. But if there was a way to remove that, I would probably play it more than once. I gave it a three. Phil, what's next? Um, agree with you all on that. The next one we played again, Hebereke. Uh, I think it might have been the year following or something like that. Uh, what is it called? Hash I actually didn't write down the name. Hashihari, I think. S something like that it means rapid heart. It's a racing game. And it's a weird racing game. It's not a Mario Kart uh, perspective style racing game. Not a Mode 7 racing game like you might expect on Super Nintendo. It's a top down, like super sprint sort of game where you're just running on foot and there's items across the stage you can pick up, sort of like Mario Kart. They could boost you, they could turn everybody into eggplants, um, they could make birds just shit all over the place, some slippery shit that you can run over. Uh, I'll start us off on reviews. It's a three out of five again for me, not because of technical things this time, just because of the language barrier really, and um, it seems like you might have to unlock the stages, which I kind of hate uh, for a game that I want to just pick up and play multiplayer. Um, I think there's a lot there. It's probably one I would revisit more quickly than the first one, just because I know it's not going to be a slowdown hell. Um, and I like how mean it is to the players in a lot of ways. Uh, still got the same great sprite work, same great character designs, and uh, cute music. Um, so it's got everything that the first one had going for it. Uh, but yeah, just it's kind of oblique how you get to other stages, except for when we were stuck on one stage the whole game. Pants problems. You feel uh, any different on that? No. Out of the out of the ones we played tonight, that's that one's probably the one I like the most. Um, this one, 
it feels like something you could actually come back to and, and mess around with. It's weird and neat, and it reminds me a lot of like those overhead uh, Neo Geo racing games, or, or there were a couple like that. Um, got a weird momentum to it. It's it's also crazy. There's a lot of crap going on. Um, feels feels unfinished in a weird way and kind of broken. And I don't know if that was the way we were playing it, but it feel I'd be curious to actually try it on a, a real hardware because it feels like there's debug menus left in there that shouldn't be there and all sorts of weird crap like that but um i don't know it's the best one but it's still a three because these are just kind of what it feels like with these but uh yeah it's probably my favorite out of out of the pack uh what do you think will i i like that uh it was uh kind of weird to play at first because the controls were steering wheel tight but after you get done with that um my only experience is with the first track and until we figure out like how to get the next track or unlock those, it'll probably just stay at a three. Uh, this one was really fun to watch with the difficulty high, so I really like that. And uh, I'll probably revisit this, maybe just watch, because that was fun. And Phil, what's next? Yeah, some goofy antics in that one. A uh, little less goofy antics in the next one. Um, it was a puzzle game. Um, Oh, it's called like Puzzle no Awashi Hibareke, uh, something like that. Um, this one I just grabbed because, you know, Hibareke, let's do Hibareke Variety Hour. Uh, it's definitely got some language barriers to it, but uh, it's a board game type setup. Um, not quite Mario Party because they're not simultaneous play mini games, but there are about four mini games in this one. There's a crosswords one uh, where you have to do a crossword puzzle in Japanese. Comes up a little too frequently for people who don't speak Japanese or can't read it. Um, the other ones were much more approachable. You don't really need to read to play them. You had a uh, jigsaw puzzle-esque game where you have to reassemble a picture. You have a spot the difference game. And then you have to play one that's just like Where's Waldo? where you're looking for a character in a shopping mall, or I don't know what that was. Um, this one's probably, for me, it's just a solid three, but it might be a two, uh, just cause I can't speak Japanese. If I could, I would give it a three, cause I would assume I might enjoy that crossword game a little bit more. Um, again, good presentation. Uh, this one had snappier menus. Um, and I do just kind of wish all these games were one game um, that we played, because it'd be cool if there was a mini game where you're racing and a mini game where you're fighting, and then there's these puzzles, and then sometimes you have to do a crossword. Uh, but the way it went, we had to do crosswords a lot, and you got some back to the start a lot. So um, that really hampered my enjoyment. At the end of the day, I'll probably give it a 2.5 out of 5 Garfields. Pants problems, what do you think of this one? Yeah, this is the well. I, I don't know. This this one had some interesting parts to it. Obviously, there's a big language barrier to overcome with it. Um, but it, there, the, the kind of quick uh, pick up and play party games that like the 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 find the picture find thing and then the match one. Those are actually pretty cool, and I wish more modern party games would do that instead of just trying to do like ride the speech ball, knock someone off a cliff, something like that. It's kind of neat seeing something like that in a um, kind of Mario Party-esque game. Still better than any Mario Party game I've played, but overall, at the end of the day, it's it's, it's a three, just like all of them. I feel like, you know, if I was native Japanese, uh, you know, speaker, I, I'd get more out of it, but it um, it's, it's cool. It's cool to see it. They definitely went for it with these titles, and I feel like they all, like you said, they probably would have been better served as a, like, single package. You know, but at the end of the day, they were they were separate, so it's good. Probably you know three again. But what do you think, Will? This one was very interesting. Uh, it was fun playing. This is like a short series of single player games, but uh, at first I thought it was gonna be like a multiplayer, like Mario Party. But uh, I thought it was pretty cool that it wasn't, uh, with the exception of the crossword puzzle. I like this one. I gave it a three. And Phil, take it away. All right, yeah, so those are the Hebereke games we checked out this weekend. There's another, uh, there's a bunch more. Um, the one I wish we had the time to check out but might deserve its own episode uh, would be the um, 
like match three color dropping game, kind of a Puyo Puyo derivative. Uh, but uh, Sunsoft would go on to make some real deal fighting games, and that's what spurred this on. So uh, look forward to us checking those out maybe in the future. Thanks for tuning in.